Urtuk the Desolation is a turn-based, hex-based <laughs> strategy game. Uh, it has been a very, very uh, interesting take on the genre. It is, uh, well, I mean, it doesn't necessarily break any boundaries or break any paradigms or anything. Uh, however, though, it does execute a lot of things very nicely. And given the fact that it's on Mac, for some reason, I'm just like, yeah, I'll totally like play this on Mac because I travel occasionally and I don't have a lot of games that I truly enjoy playing that I can unwind to, like after a photo shoot or something, I can unwind to and just relax and play. I don't have a lot of games that really kind of fit that bill, right? Which is why I take my Switch everywhere with me. Uh, if I could just take one less item with me when I travel, travel a little bit lighter and have games that could support that, then this would be a game that I would take because I could very easily dump hours into this game uh, or at least very least maybe 90 minute sessions easily. Uh, I don't know how long this episode is going to be, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be pretty long because it is a turn based game and it is a slow turn based game. Um, but it just it just feels like a good kind of like, you know, lay back and relax kind of game. Kind of like uh, Dank, Dark and Tankus Dungeon. Can't get can't shake that. Kind of like Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon was a game like that for me uh, on Switch, actually, where you just, you know, you, you could just kind of relax and play. Sure, it's not the most like, you know, soothing and, you know, happy uh, of, of games. Uh, this one kind of the same vein, right? Visually, uh, but still something you kind of sit back and relax, just kind of play like most turn based games. Um, and it really just kind of works well, executes us very well. It's not deep, like we're not going like, you know, Final Fantasy Tactics or Fell Seal or anything like that. Like it's not crazy deep with classes, but it's it's deep enough that you can get um, enough you know, character customization in terms of like your classes or jobs uh, to make them feel a little, at least a little unique. You know, it's like a little shiny compared to another one. Like I'll have a Berserker that's like, you know, a, a super, you know, uh, offensive Berserker and I can have another one that's going to be, you know, maybe a little bit more of a reactionary one. Whenever he gets attacked, he can counterattack and whatever, you know? So, so there's, there's ways you can kind of tailor these guys, but it's not going to be again, like Final Fantasy Tactics or like Felsia or uh, even like Gears Tactics where you just have like endless you know kind of customization uh gears tactics doesn't really belong in that category but <laughs> you get the gist right um let's go ahead and get into my current campaign which is actually my first campaign and i'm like three and a half hours into it and it's still uh it's just they're, they're very long this is not like you know this is not like you get in and you just play um like a simple run like uh ftl style although there are some ftl style elements where for example i just uh saved this village and I ended up um, uh, inspecting it, searched the site, and then it said you explored the site. So it says uh, daily resources are earned from this village. Okay, so you explored the site and discovered tunnels beneath the surface. You've already unsealed the gate within. So it had a little oh, a little pop up, and then it said um, you see them, there's some tunnels. Do you want to unseal them and go take a look? And so I was like, yeah, unseal them. And then I went and took a look and there was like nothing in there, but there was a whole bunch of vampires that like, sc like scattered out, you know, like, like bats do, right? <laughs> like all over the place. So now they said, now it said you will encounter more vampires on your journeys. So I was like, cool. Yeah. So there's like this kind of FTL thing where it's like, you can make decisions and those decisions can have lasting effects on the rest of your campaign. And these campaigns are, are very long. Uh, they definitely set you up for the long game here. Um, and in that regard, I would say it's kind of like Darkest Dungeon, right? Where you, you can lose uh, you, uh, you know, people in your party um, permanently and then gain them as you play as well. Eventually, you can get to the point where you have none. Uh, or if you lose like your main character, Urtuk, I believe that that's pretty, pretty much done. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it's 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 a l slow burn kind of kind of game like you're, you're you're doing a lot of management here i wish this was on switch honestly um there's zero controller support for this absolutely zero <laughs> and you can't say it's not possible because final fantasy tactics <laughs> is on console so you can't say it's not possible um but it might be maybe a little bit now nah, it's not it's, it's, it's definitely possible uh, but you know let, let, let them get their footing here on steam with a decent rating, a very positive overall review, uh, $19.99 price, so good price points. Um, 
and then let them put that money into getting getting a port going. Uh, so here we go. This is your management. We're gonna start here because this is uh, obviously a very important part of you know your turn based games when you have like a party you have to manage and such. And this is perfect because I just completed a mission that's going. It's very quiet because the music does not seem to loop. Uh, overall, the game is very moody and very quiet. So there's some music that comes on, but usually very droney music. Um, so yes, it's, it's it's quiet for a reason. Um, so I just finished a match. I just finished an encounter, and now my characters have a few of them can be upgraded, right? Um, so let's start with Lear. Now, first off, you could rename these characters to whatever you want, which is pretty dope, especially if you want to play this thing on stream or something like that, and you got some viewers you want to throw them in there and just be like, okay, Lear is now going to be blank, right? You could just name them whatever, and I love that. I love that for games like this. Uh, Darkest Dungeon, same way. Um, uh, Ox is not included. Like any any game that you could play that you could name name it after people who are watching or like you know fans or viewers or friends or family or you know girlfriends that didn't work out stuff like that. I'm a big fan, super big fan. Um, <laughs> you also have the ability because the artwork of the characters doesn't really change. Uh, like your berserkers look basically identical. They, I mean, identical. Like not even basically, they're identical, right? Your um, your uh, what are these guardians? Your guardians look identical. Uh, they have this system, very simple system, where you could go through and add banners to them. So, for example, I put a shield on this guy. Um, and then on the other guy, I think I put the same damn shield. So, you know, I'm not doing very good at differentiating them or anything. <laughs> but you can see that, like, there's there's a way. Like, for example, this guy, he's got his own, you know, band here. So I know who he is. I, just, I picked up this guy just a few matches ago. Uh, he has no mutators or anything, right? So he doesn't really have, he's basically just a base level grunt doesn't have anything right um oh i got a new axe though hold on it's a steel big axe what's this guy have oh iron big. i'm gonna give it to him so i have one guy that's basically like super hooked up and the other guy who basically has nothing which is why this guy gets the big fancy thing and the other guy gets nothing um my war monk uh war monk is really good at like at uh, a little bit of uh, cc he, uh, I actually have been putting a bunch of points in agility to get, make sure he gets his turn more quickly. Also increases his stamina. Stamina is not um, related to health in this game. Uh, stamina is related to uh, like energy or, or really stamina. I mean, like, you know, stamina in MMOs means something different than what they mean in turn-based games. In turn-based games, it's like, it even says right here, it says, when your stamina reaches zero, you cannot act. The state is called out of breath. So they have actions they, could, they can... Um, uh, they can do and then they can uh, eventually get out of breath excuse me they get out of breath where they can uh, they will un be unable to perform certain actions like reactionary things or assist things so you want to you want to make sure they have some uh, stamina or, or manage that in some way by you know maybe moving them but not necessarily executing an action so you don't need every so every single move doesn't have to also include an action which will allow them an opportunity to rest and gain like 25 stamina or something like that and you can raise that base number by just you know putting dump uh, dumping points into, into uh, agility now agility also gets them to turn faster now this guy is really good at cc he could get around um and i actually have these mutators in right here but you you can collect these or you can um uh extract these after battles and I had the mutated light foot, for example. Uh, it says upgrade of the swap ability, allowing you to swap with allies multiple times depending on your move distance. You can still execute an ability after. So it's a whole, it's all hex based, right? So if you move next to somebody, you can't move through them. You have to actually swap with them, swap hexes with them, and then you can move from there. Uh, so light foot just makes that, you know, upgrades that main, that base swap ability to make that a little bit better. And for somebody who has a high agility and who has CC where they can flip dudes around and dump them into like uh into kill zones or something um then that's what you want you want them to have be able to uh, uh maneuver more easily what else does he have stunning blow so yeah adds trace stunning blow on critical unblocked hit enemy is stunned uh, and then tyrant criticals adds trace tyrant criticals on critical uh, unblocked hit reduce target speed by 15 so it's perfect like he basically he's super fast and he makes other people slower doesn't necessarily hit fat, hit hard or anything like that so i've been dumping points into this trying to min max him to kind of see where that goes um this uh this is my um uh, yeah, this is my level. There's my main level three uh, guardian, my first one, and this one is uh, Robern. He's the uh, the other one. Both of them have pretty similar builds. I actually run them together because they have an ability called. Uh, brother in arms this guy does support your ally with an assist attack uh, or shielding chances are base progress uh, equip gear for shielding shield and heavy armor is best for attack it says blah, 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 blah. so what this does is what this trait does is whenever somebody attacks somebody next to him if he has i believe if he has the stamina to do so he will uh, uh, execute a normal attack 
if he's in an adjacent hex. So for these guys, I've just been, I guess, what uh, mostly has yeah, strength, strength and vitality for the most part. So yeah, I've been kind of taking turns, a little bit of strength, a little bit of vitality, um, just to kind of make them stronger and healthier. I mean, they, they, they're pretty durable as is. Um, I will say though, like I might actually re-roll this entire run now, now that I'm kind of getting the, the hang of it and I get a good feel of it and, and actually upgrade up the uh, the difficulty um, and just start from scratch up difficulty and see how that feels. Because right now I'm on, uh, I think, the suggested if you've played turn-based games before and it feels pretty easy. Uh, now I play turn-based games literally every single day. Every single day I'm playing at least a turn-based game. So... Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm a little too much of a tactician for this. I don't know, but uh, I know I think the game is actually kind of tuned to be a little bit easy. So if you get in, don't put it on easy. Uh, I, I honestly believe you'll do fine on, I think it's normal mode or whatever. You'd be totally fine. Um, let me see uh, this guy. Strength. I mean, we just put this, just basically strength on these dudes. Just to make them just hit hard. Jerry is a javelinier, so I, I think I probably want him to be, have good agility, like maybe good range support and all that stuff. We're gonna go ahead and uh, crank this up though a little bit of strength. I think that'll help his uh, yeah, two point five damage percent damage per point. Um, so this is he has range support. This is a, another mutator that I extracted and I put in here, and you could just take these out and put them on whoever, right? Um, well, this one only works on uh, people that have ranged item uh, or a ranged weapon, <clears throat> so he will. Uh, if he's within range, he will throw an attack. He will basically throw an attack whenever somebody, if you have a melee character that's beaten on somebody and this guy's within range, he'll, he'll assist you with an attack. Uh, Urtuk, this is my priest. Um, he took a little bit of a beating, but he's doing all right. He's got all, he's got tons and tons and tons of perks. He's got three more here. He says, this trait will be revealed when your character meets the required conditions. Now he's, he is your main character who is going to, uh, continually... Uh, mutate and continually grow. I mean, he's got he's the side of his head. <laughs> He'll continue mutating. I don't know if his portrait changes, but uh, yeah, he's the guy that you want to um, to uh, keep alive, obviously. And then you want to give him some good stuff because he's got some pretty interesting heal abilities. Most of them cost his own health. Um, <clears throat> let me see. For example, he has Life Steal, which costs him 25% of his max, HP, max HP, but he gives somebody... Um, uh, the ability to, to, to heal themselves. Uh, and then he also heals himself too, which is pretty sick. So, uh, see feast when an enemy dies, heal 50% of your max HP over two turns this is perfect for him because he could get into a fight, uh, do some heals. If he takes some damage, he basically runs to the other side of the map. And then once my dudes start killing off guys, he's going to, uh, get some healing going. So thick skin, uh, max HP by 15%. Perfect for somebody who's constantly you know, slitting their own wrists in order to save other people, like quite literally. All right, let's see. Uh, this guy could use some more agility points. Sure. All right, cool. We could respec if we want to, but it'll cost life essence. There are so many things to go over here. Um, before we do anything else, though, I'm going to set a tray out here on a uh, on a mission because because he, he has the ability to upgrade weapons and I'm not even at that part yet. You know, again, I'm three and a half or now almost four hours in uh, and I'm not even at that part yet where I could get uh, upgrade weapons and all that stuff. So let's say banish. So let a tray, the weapon smith, leave your party. will travel alone in the wilderness and maybe. No, 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 we don't do that. A training to perform intense battle training after completion. The character will level up. Cost 30 alcohol to perform. I have 34 alcohol. Uh, finishes in two days. Let me see if a tree fails, uh, 30% 50% chance, 30% when injured, he might return injured or be killed. Yikes. Uh, see scout and command, I trade the weapon to scout the nearby area. At the end of the day, new terrain will be revealed. Ooh, butcher, the trail will butcher. Um, oh, slay him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you could slay certain members in order to just get the, uh, get there. Get their stuff. Uh, let's see. Does not have a single mutator and a single gear twi equipped. Yeah, we don't have anything for him yet. So we're, we're working on that. We're working on that. Um, let's send him. Let's, send, let's do some training. <laughs> let's have him level up. He's pretty. I mean, he's. Let's see. Weapon, yeah, there we go. So he's on training. I'm training the weapons have been added to mission training. Awesome. So he's going to go out and do that for a couple days, basically a couple turns. And yeah, so there's a lot of other stuff to cover, but I think that that's probably the good the gist. Now, now let's let's show you the combat for fuck's sake. All right, so this is the map here. We started over here in the corner. We've we've gone through. We've cleared a couple of things. We actually own a couple of towns. It's yours. And we own towns. They basically generate resources for you. Trill in the form of trillium. Uh, trillium here. It says it's the currency of the of the world. If there's a negative number, it represents a total of all wages calculated per day. I believe Dankus Dungeon have the same has the same thing. Um, I'm fairly certain they have the same thing. 
uh, where you have to pay your 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 uh, your party members and whatnot. It's been a while since I played, uh, but let's see. <clears throat> you have different missions you could go and attend to. Uh, I see over here. There's a zone. It says, uh, let me see. It says somewhere east of you, people are talking to villagers getting abducted to their homes. Rumor is that's the work of cultists. Oh, so they've established a hidden base and are kidnapping common folk to use. Okay, so um, this is just this is not going to give you any bonuses or anything so we're gonna go we're gonna get some bonuses so that way you could see how that functional that that uh, uh, feature functions so nothing interesting here nothing interesting here uh there are also roaming oh here he goes he's finished battle training plus one level current level three woo woo see just send him out he's fine actually i wonder i wonder what else he could send him out on let me see so yeah he leveled up awesome his vitality is huge man hp 11 i mean his, his strength sucks it even says i think it even says here uh can equip any melee weapon Somewhere it said leave him behind because he's a uh, weapon enhancer. Here you go to enhance your gears. He does not work. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, you'd best keep him in reserve. He impresses no one on the battlefield. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's where I saw that and I was like, okay, well, I guess we'll put him, put him on the battlefield ever. Uh, wow, it's great. Let's keep throwing him, throw him in there. There we go. In case we have to use him for some reason, then he could just come out and just be a meat shield or something. And we just hope we don't lose him. Let me see. Uh, oh, can't train anymore. So he's done with that. And let's see. We'll scout the nearby area. Sure. Go on a scouting mission. Perfect. Give him a little bit of experience, a little field experience. Now you see this fog of war here. I've already kind of gone and explored all this area to the right, just kind of hopping from place to place, and that costs money, right? Like your your trillium is going to start to deplete, so you have to go and and um, and do things in order to uh, increase that count, you know, or, or get a get a uh, a feed or a trickle of uh, trillium coming in from different towns that you've uh, you've taken over. By taking over, you're pretty much like you know uh, defending them. For example, this one, you can now attack the scavengers' town watch and capture the village or leave it for the time being. I guess that we are kind of like you know. You know, kind of like uh, America style. This place needs some freedom, you know? <laughs> all right. So, ooh, lots of enemies. We're all right lined up together. Um, ooh, face to face. So there's a couple of civilians here, right? Now, these civilians, they just look like regular civilians, but they could they could end up being, you know, berserkers or something. And then you'll come back. And then after you finish, they're like, oh, man, I'm not going back to my, sh my shitty town. I'm going to come and join you guys. You guys are awesome. And so, <laughs> and that's how you end up getting, uh, you know, more, you know, more people on your team. Uh, I, I, I kind of fucked this up already because I, I don't have uh, Earthquake actually on the, in, in battle because I took him out because he was injured. So that really sucks. That really sucks. Oh, you know what I can do? Um, let me do this. Let me, uh, let me see. Exit menu, low game. There we go. We'll do that. Perfect, because we haven't really done anything, so. Oh, we set the dude out of the things. We can do that real quick. Let me see. First you, let's take out, uh, oh god, I kind of like Jerry. Hmm. 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 All right, let's go spend these points again. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Hit hard. Jerry. Uh, let's get Jerry a little bit of some strength. There we go. And then... Let me see. We'll pull out Rogziel here because he's got nothing here, right? So we'll reserve him, and that leaves us an open spot. We'll put him in battle. There we go. Now we have a good, balanced uh, team before we go into the next mission here. And I'll go ahead and take uh, a try here. And then, uh uh. Oh, because I'm, I'm moving, I think. Yeah, because I'm moving. Oh, don't drop gear. Shit. <laughs> Who to drop from? I made him put his weapon down. He could use anything though, so there you go. Give him a steel big axe. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. We need we do we do need the other guy to do, to take that mission. There you go. So training. Good. He's gone. Uh this has got to go to him. There we go. Okay, now we're caught up. Now we can actually break this stuff down and get some uh, some trillium. So iron big axe, get rid of that. Iron big axe, get rid of that. We're all about steel now. And you could quick save. So we could uh right here, we could just uh you know quick save right here, boom. And then go into this fight, and if we fail miserably, no problem. So engage. Here we go. You know the art style in this game is 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 really really good. Like I mean, this is hand drawn awesome art style. Whatever you call it, it's also a different layout by the way, slightly different. I think we kind of reverse sides here, rotate a little bit. Um, but the UI could really use some work. Like the UI is the thing that it's probably the most disappointed in visually. Like there's just um. Yeah, it's just, it could just use some work. <laughs> all right, so these guys are all lined up here. Uh, we can hold down control and see who they are. We have an assassin. <clears throat> Tells me what their abilities are, their move points, their stamina, their timeline, their 25. Uh, the number that you see above them is the order in which they're going to um, uh, to basically get their turn. So what I want to do 
is I mean my my flipper guy here is like just so good but he has to be positioned in a way where you could flip somebody into you know, into a pit or something like this so I'll leave him here and then have him swoop around here because these guys are definitely gonna start moving down here to try to harass this poor guy um, and I'll actually I'll flip him out of here because he's sitting in there taking damage in this oil pit right here it says right here it says units entering or remaining in this hex are damaged for 10% of max HP so we're gonna get him out of there uh, let me see uh, see normal strength yep okay uh, you see move points the falls Thea falls to see us. Got a spearman. Yeah, so, and this guy is a hammerman, immortal, immobilizing criticals, stunning blow. So he doesn't have all this stuff unlocked. So this is pretty great. Like, these guys have abilities they just don't have unlocked. So this is going to be pretty easy. This, this is, this guy's kind of a, a, a dick. Um, the catapult. So we'll probably try to get around to that quickly. Um, in terms of my lineup here, like, let me see. One. I think. I think it's probably good, except for this guy. Let's go ahead and put you here. And you can use the numbers to kind of kind of scatter around through there and get that. So four. There we go. So one. So one, he's gonna move. Uh oh, he's number two here. Um oh he could just chuck. Throw things over there. Now, uh something else to just note. Uh look at the elevation here. So five to seven, they can't attack from here. Uh, well, I can't attack up. I don't, I don't believe they could attack down. Um, but seven to six, they'll get, they'll definitely, they can definitely attack, and they'll get a bonus for height bonus. They'll have, they have the high ground, as a wise man once said. So we uh, need to get these guys off of the low ground here and around here as quickly as possible. We'll put our shield bros there, and then this guy's gonna clear out. This guy's gonna clear out. And we'll probably move him over here. This guy's gonna go over here. This guy's gonna go over here. Um, he's still gonna have a low ground here, but he's durable. You could deal with it. And then let's see what happens. So villager shaken, I uh, says, uh, adventures over here. We've been bound and shackled in this oil for a slow and torturous death. Please help me. So they're shackled still. You could flip them, but at least they'll uh, stop taking damage from that. So again, this guy's gonna get moving over here. Now we could right click. If you see the game speed up like super fast. That's me, basically right-clicking to speed things up. You'll see it in a minute. Um, yeah, go ahead and hit him. God, basically no damage. You see this guy. Oh, man. This guy's probably the best. There we go. And we see my caster, a priest caster. Let's have him come over. I'm going to stay right here, actually. Not do anything, I think, maybe. He's gonna come down though. One, two. We get all my turns go first, so yeah, he'll be fine. We'll just stay right there. Plus 30 stamina, plus 25 speed, so he'll get his turn faster in the next round. Uh, all right, so my Zerker guy. Is this, where is this? Uh, six, seven, okay, so God, they still have the high ground. Yeah, okay, so we'll come over here, try to lure them out a little bit. And the same thing with this guy here. Just force him to step off that, right? And then we'll go ahead and use some more stamina to provide him by a shield with a shield boost. Okay, um, can you really only move one? Okay. If we can attack, uh, or we can push somebody into somebody uh, somebody else, but it's not really gonna work. Oh, here we go. We can attack this guy and he'll get a bonus of the attack there, the range attack. There we go. Try to whittle down this guy quickly. Now he swaps and moves over here. Going right for the range. Perfect. He's still within range for me. And actually, I'll have the high ground once I move over there. Woo! Damn, that's some good damage. Oh, he's going right for me, huh? Hmm. Let's right click and move these guys a little quicker. Yeah, that guy's has charge ability. Okay, yeah, they're going for that guy. Uh, what is this tile? A normal terrain. Damn, okay. Hmm. I don't really have a way to manipulate this guy in my favor just yet. Let me... I really want to get this guy out of this oil, so let me move over here. We'll flip him. I just hope we survive this, right? There we go. No damage on a flip. Let me see. We can heal this guy. Or at the very least. Yeah, we can heal him. He'll be able to get some of that health back. Let's move over here first. There we go. 
Yep, slow speed, quick sand, hover or control over this, control hover over this, and it'll tell you. Uh, incoming damage increased by 25%, and movement speed reduced by 25 You don't want to stay there. <laughs> That's not where you want to stay. All right, so notice he casts an ability on him, and he takes damage, right? That's how he works. Okay, so there we go. Now we can start beating on these dudes here. This guy is in perfect place to get shoved into here. Oh, snap. Okay, let me maneuver myself over here a little bit. And then I have a counterattack. It's gonna come back here. Nice. Good damage. Good damage. So he's gonna do, um, I can step back a little bit. Is that quick sand? No, it's not. Um, actually, I can raise this up. Cost 50 stamina. How much stamina do I have right now? Uh, 80. Okay, so I have plenty. So I can lift this up, go over here, and then I can range this dude. At least that puts me on even ground with him, right? Yep, I know you're also hurting. Now he's got the now he's got the low ground. Yeah, baby. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna get I wanna get over here in this position and knock this guy into the uh the, the kill zone, which would just kill him instantly. Uh but that's not gonna happen. So I'll, but I still will be able to position myself here and then do some work on this guy. Okay, this guy over here, perfect. We could just go ba bam. Hmm. He's gonna hmm. He's not gonna be able to attack, I don't think, but maybe we'll get lucky with this. Oh, that was with a crit. Okay. Speed things up a little bit. Okay, now this guy's screwed. Oh, you know, he moved again. Dang. Oh boy. I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh oh. They're building their own fortification. Launch a catapult. Oh, great. Yeah, so that's going to last for like three turns. Uh, and do 10% damage. Not like the other oil where it's just permanent. This oil that starts the game, you start the game with is permanent. Um, but it's still going to do some work. So we got to get it out of there. Um, there are backstab, uh, abilities or not abilities, but, um, damage. Uh, I don't think it counts from this angle. I think it have to be like directly behind him, but we're going to go ahead and hit him from here anyways. And hope this, this is the guy with the, uh, brothers to arms or whatever. Oh, we're going to kill him anyways with the retaliation. Done. Yep. Oh man, so much damage. Okay, so let's get him out of there. I think he can still attack from that distance. Yep. Finish this guy off. We'll get our guys out of the oil and quicksand. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, yeah, this guy. Oh man, so screwed. So screwed. Hmm. So if you're wondering, why don't we go here and throw this guy to this guy? It doesn't work. It just, just dis disables the ability. See how it's like red right here? You cannot flip. Um, actually, it tells you. It says you cannot flip. Uh, destination is either too high uh, or blocked or target is rooted. Um, this guy might be just screwed. <laughs> I can't take these guys on myself. I don't have a whole lot. Look at my strength. It's garbage. So uh, this guy is going to have to just fend for himself for a bit. I'm just going to jump right over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see you later. Can okay, I have my guys maybe let's pack on this guy here? We'll get this guy in a second, but his his speed is so low. What is his speed at? He's out of breath. Yeah, he's out of breath. Um But yeah, timeline 4010. He's not even on the list over here. So yeah, he he won't go for a minute. At least another minute, at least another round. So we'll be able to get in better position. Meanwhile, though, we'll pick on these guys. They're working on those, on my friends, my possible recruits. Let's go down here and help out um, my flipper. He's gonna need it. Ooh, can I maneuver myself in just the perfect way? Let's speed things up. Okay, yeah, you can move now, please. Um, far away. <laughs> okay, so he just casts focus ability ready. So he has a focus ability. Uh, you unlock these as you kind of progress your character. This is another way of um, kind of customize your character. What's great about this is your focus abilities, I believe, can be used by anybody on the field. Um, so it says nullifies next incoming damage attack. I'm certain, yeah, I'm certain you can. You'll see in a second. Uh, so first off, he has a regular Aegis that you could cast on somebody and it'll protect this guy from being taken damage. So I, I'm, I, 
this guy is either gonna go for me or he's gonna go for him. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cast this on, not on me because if I cast it on me, then I will die because I use his health. Um, I guess I could use this on myself, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of demonstrating things. Uh, so I can't cast this on anybody right now. So let's uh, just take my word for it. We're gonna go ahead and cast this on myself and hopefully it doesn't kill me. There we go. So now I'll block the next incoming uh, attack. Now I can't do this to anybody else, so because I'll die. So we'll just uh, we'll leave it at that. So he stays right there. <laughs> All right, perfect. This is working out pretty well, I think. He stays here. No, he's throwing a trap. That's fine. Oh, he is going for my guy over there. Look at that block. See, that's why you got that. And a counter strike. Okay. Let's get over here and get out of this, this catapult out of my face. Strong versus. It's another trait that you're slowly unlocking. Two out of twenty. The longer you play these characters, the, the stronger they're going to get. Not just in level, but also in these traits and unlocks and all this stuff. Like they will, they will be completely not completely different, but they'll be tailored um, in such a way that you'll be able to, uh, you know, have like kind of these subclasses that you create. Okay, so we got to move this guy a little bit closer. Actually, no, we'll just uh, pack this dude. Let's see. Last stand on next lethal damage survive with two HP. Let's put this on him. Again, that that was from the Berserker, by the way. That was the Berserker's uh, global ability. Very cool function. So now again, he's protected from the next attack, and we'll just uh, you know keep on pegging, taking uh, chicken uh, chipping away health at that guy from that guy. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to yeah. So we're going to push this guy and then he's going to get stunned and then we're going to move forward kind of forcing people to forcing them to move in. So watch, we'll push him back two hexes. He takes damage. It doesn't show, but it's bashing the barricade there and he should be stunned. He may not be stunned actually. Um, let me see. He's going to keep on regenerating health so long as he can uh, stay alive. So let's go ahead and just do attacks and keep this guy. And then there's another attack, cross attack here. Last stand is available still. These guys will be fine. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so he's not stunned. I wonder if he's immune to stun. That's that's the only thing I can think of. He's actually probably just immune to stun. Okay, even ground here. Kill him. Oh, here we go. So another, yeah, here, trait unlocked. Chibi trait unlocked. Strike with bonus damage. Uh, with bonus damage and chance of double hit when your target is weak against you. Bonus damage is 10 to 50% and chance of double hit is 10 to 50% based on current progress. When at maximum progress, the first hit is a critical. Pay attention to what triggers this trait's progress. So the, triggering this trait's progress is as easy as attacking something that's weak to you, which in this case is going to be um, these, like, ranged guys. Um, which I believe, I, I believe it's a classic, classic like, paper, rock, scissors kind of setup. So let's see. Strong, so strong. And he's done. Okay, this guy is. It's always. I'm not gonna. Oh, oh, that was their leader. Uh, great. That means the other guy's gonna panic and they're gonna run. Yep, I'm out of here. So they're gonna try to retreat. Uh, but not before I put this guy in here. <laughs> oh, look at them. They're fighting back. Looks survives again. Ooh, God, just barely. <laughs> Throw on the javelin. We'll get this guy down eventually. Let's go ahead and take care of this dude. Let's give him a good whacking. Berserker, strong. So strong. Yeah, double hit. I'm out of here. Let's see. Can we... We could block the path here. or Oh, I know, I know. We'll go over here. That way we can... Oh, we'll put it here. See if he'll move around me. Oh, did this guy really just set himself up? <laughs> All right, this is the end of this guy. Good. Oh, 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 range support, go. There it is, baby. Speed things up. Get over here, take this guy out, we'll finish him. So real quick, notice that his shield and his, and his helmet's blinking. Uh, your weapons and armor can take damage. They restore after your fight, but they will take damage. Um, and they can break. And the same thing with the enemies as well, and you could see that. So uh, this is another dynamic thing I like about the gameplay here, is that 
you are constantly um uh the the battlefield is constantly changing your character at the beginning is not the character at the end uh and it's because they're battle worn their stamina is run down they're out of breath you can see they're, they're they're out of breath like this right here right so there's certain things they won't be able to achieve um and yeah it's just it's just it's just a very very dynamic fight and then of course the overall the overall map as you move to certain areas and all that stuff and you, you explore you uh, explore you do there's other roving bands of mercenaries and stuff and you come across them and you fight them uh very very cool in terms of depth just line them up baby <laughs> jeez they just keep on coming let me see we'll see if we can pay. no okay all right, finish this guy off. Strong! Strong! <laughs> the sounds are amazing too, by the way. Still lives. Of course, of course he does. All right, so that guy is going to stay there, which was a really dumb move. Um, I'm going to hit this guy just to stun him. Or at least get him out of the way a little bit. Because my dude's going to die if, he, uh, if I don't do that, so... That's a little bit too far. Can I cast a spell? No, I can't. Oh, it's too far. Uh-oh. I don't want to lose my guy there. Everyone's rushing to his aid. Get him. Get him, villager guy. Okay, so we could flip this dude here. Might have a problem, though, because... Just scoop, just scoop them in. Just scoop them in. <laughs> See, I'm a tactics god. <laughs> I just put my I just put my flipper guy right there. I just I just keep on doing it. Let's go ahead and raise this up a little bit. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll raise it up. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh no. Oh, dang it! <laughs> Injured. So uh, if they die once, you could you could help them with medicine, but medicine gets expensive because you have to craft it and it costs flesh and blood and all that. Um, so, you know, if you could avoid having somebody die, like if I had to move that guy out of the way, we could have taken out this last dude with no problem, right? But still, see, look, now my guy's here. Oh, I could have helped you, but nope, too late. Um, <laughs> now I can uh, bash this guy into this. And then he's going to take, uh, bash the barricade. Now he's slowed. We can pull this guy over. And now we got brothers in arms. Here we go. And a range attack. This guy's screwed. Oh, is the other guy brothers in arms? Do it. The other guy's a brothers in arms guy. Yeah. Then we'll bring this guy over. He can just watch. He won't get there in time. Just stay alive for a second. Oh, God. Just stay alive for a second. And then whack in. Brothers in arms. Brothers in arms. Oh, dang. Avoid and support. Out of breath, you see. Can't support. Out of breath. There's a stamina right there. That's how it gets you. Oh, so you got another trait there. And then this is it. The end of the fights. See, I'm telling, I'm telling you, like normal mode is pretty easy, right? So, uh, if you're somebody who has played a lot of turn-based games and you you fancy yourself pretty good at these, uh, and you want a challenge, please, please don't do normal mode. I, 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 it looks, you know, it looks hard. You know, visually, you're like, oh man, this is a gritty game. This is probably pretty hard. Uh, very deceiving. So you, you capture the site. Now all its valuables and resources are yours. You save two of the two villagers, and as a reward, we're acquired 36 life essence. Nobody wants to join my party, though. Fine. Um, so your life essence, I have 161. And I can extract some of these mutators. You could combine them as well. So if I get like this one and this one, right? Uh, I see bleeding. So it says on critical unblocked hit incur bleeding status. Bleeding inflicts 5% max HP damage each turn with each incoming uh, normal unblocked hit an additional 10% per stack uh, max. Blah, blah, blah. So basically I could take this and I can combine it with this to make it a little bit more powerful. Uh, some traits actually have a cost to them not in life essence, you can see the extract called light 22 life essence, but in uh, how much, uh, like, like for example, one of them I think I have is reduces your maximum health by like five, like five or six percent. But the more you upgrade it, the more it, um, or the le the less health it, it takes away from your maximum HP. So, pretty, pretty cool, like, setup overall. Battle spoils, I got a steel staff. Ooh. Uh, about time we get a better staff. My poor Urtuk been rock walking around with a fucking stick this whole time. Um, I think it's an iron staff actually is what Urtuk has, but still, steel's gonna be better. Let me see. So, immobilizing criticals on critical unblocked hit, immobilize target for one turn. Okay, that's cool. 
So, let's see, uh, so on critical on blockade, enemy is stunned, mace or maul, so that limits to who can have that, right? That's going to be my, um, my flipper. He's, he could do it. Glorath. So let's go and get, uh, I can afford probably one good one. Let's get one of this. This one's a new one to me. On critical unblock to immobilize target for one turn. This might be pretty interesting to put on somebody that uh, um, has a high crit rate. Not rate, but high crit. Um, let me see. Other someone that was finished the battle training level. Yay, all right, good for you. Um, we're going to search this site. And this is a perfect way we could just kind of end this here because you've seen the fights, you've seen the rear back end, all that good stuff. Um, but let's go back to the part manager management here giving this to somebody who crits often which is this guy because he has let me see poisons criticals uh on critical unblocked hit enemy is poison uh on critical unblocked hit uh when maximum focus is reached gain critical strike for next attack so yeah action man there we go so he has a number of things that just give him um triggers on his uh, on his uh, crits and he's pretty much maxed out right now <laughs> so I'll give that to somebody else I think uh, let's go ahead and before I forget let me go ahead and give her took this see he's got yeah, iron staff that's right so we'll give you this bam better staff no stats or anything on it it's not enchanted or anything but we're going to take this and we're just going to shatter it we get trillium acquired for yep thank you so much um, cool I think we're good there we'll figure out where to put this later it's gotta be. I wanted. I wanted to put it on somebody that was um, range. Figured it'd be kind of interesting to see them, like throw a javelin, stun them from a distance, kind of thing. But there's no guarantee with that, and he doesn't have any procs either. Um, you know what though? He with the range support, he is constantly throwing. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw it on him and see how that works out. Now there is a way to uh, absorb, like for example, this. Um, I think it's with him with the the mute. a perk. Uh, strong versus. We see poison to action man. Okay, so action man, he is about to absorb this if I use it for the next, I think, seven fights. Uh, and by absorb, I believe it basically takes this, it puts it into his into his list here, and then he frees up that slot. And this is where, and I and this I'm, I'm I'm I don't know that for a fact, but that's what the way the tools have kind of explained that. And you know, these fights do take a while. So it would take, it would be a long time before I found out that was the case <laughs> in, in terms of in practice. Um, but you know, in terms of like customization, just as a base level, like there's a lot of stuff you could do with mutators to really get these guys uh, to really get these guys um, uh, customized to your liking. And this is your, yeah, this is your slot here. You can't put it here because this is your focus ability. I don't have any focus abilities for this guy yet. Um, so, oops, I, I, I clicked on the heal there. Uh, so he says recovering four days. Um, I do have, let me see, where's the medicine? Medicine, I have one more medicine. And I can make more medicine over here. Let me see, blood, flesh, 120. So like, I, I can make a bunch of medicine actually now because uh, I haven't made any yet. So it's create and then there we go. Now we have some medicine. Um, Let's go back out here so you can see what happens when you, when now that I've taken over this town, we're going to search the site. And so here we go. So it says, as you explore the site, you discover man-made tunnels beneath the surface. The local farmers mention stories of secret chambers sealed off long ago. This is very similar, if not identical, to the last story we just did uh, that I had before I started recording here. Hit this, and it says, you descended to the dark and dusty tunnels beneath the village. The farmers suggested great treasures may lie within the sealed halls, but danger may also lurk below, away from the light. Yep, it's exactly the same as the other one. Tunnels. Let's go ahead and unseal. After unsealing the gate, you search but find nothing of value again. But doom all music. Instead, a being approaches you. He claims he's been in prison here for years, and since you released him, he wants to join your party. His title is Blinwig, the Scavenger Warlord. Let's go see who he is. Blinwig. Oh, he looks just devastatingly gorgeous. Um. Rusty, okay. He doesn't scavenge much. <laughs> Let me see. When uh, see his, his uh, focus ability is when cast on your ally, he will reduce armor protection on his target. Ooh, cool. Inflicted armor damage is increased by 200%. Three charges. That's pretty sick, actually. Everybody has armor in the game, so... Well, you know, most of the enemies you encounter. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. 
So then what we'll do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, 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 this is what you would do if you're playing, right? You don't want to necessarily take somebody out who's on half health. So when injured character falls, you blah, blah, blah. so when an existing injury is left untreated for a long time, he will also die. Use medicine, treat injuries, recovery, duration increases with number of times fallen in battle and current injury status percentage. So yes, it can get worse. So what you'd probably do is put this guy in reserve so he can go and heal up. And then we'll bring Blintwig in so that he can get some, uh, you know, you can basically, um, uh, Bring up the speed in terms of gear and all that good stuff and experience and all that so search site is nothing left to uh, to search uh, It's gonna blink forever. I guess you can see here and just basically I could just you know hit space over and over again to progress the next day But it's gonna cost me money and all that and so uh, You know, maybe you don't want to do that <laughs> In a lot of these turn-based games where you have like an overworld map that you're kind of managing your campaign and your progress sometimes progressing time actually is to your detriment uh, But that's it that's Urtuk, the Desolation. Uh, again, like, pretty solid tactical game. Pretty solid tactical game, and it's a, it's a slow one. It's a slow one, and it's it's something you could get in. You could just knock out, you know, maybe 90-minute sessions and such, and uh, and then come back the next day and do a little bit more, and you got this party. Your cut's constantly evolving, uh, especially if you play, again, you play the harder difficulty levels. Like, I probably should have lost two or three characters by now um, and then gained new ones because I started off with, like, five, I think, or four, and now I have what like eight maybe nine i didn't i didn't really count um so yeah like my roster is getting pretty full uh and oh it's right there nine i think is what that number is, isn't it nine <clears throat> but yeah i'm mean, overall this is a solid one man it's a pretty solid one visuals are great if you like darkest dungeon like it's definitely you know right in the same vein that low fantasy dark dark and dingy feel um music music is great although there's like huge lulls of nothing So it'd be nice if that was not the case. Um, <laughs> music starts up again. <laughs> oh, man. But overall, a solid one. My name is Mike BAK. Phony Earth took the desolation currently available on Steam, Mac, and Linux for $19.99. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.